If you're going to catch tonight's species, you're going to have to go deep. This fish is found in the Atlantic and the Gulf and loves to eat squid, sardines, pinfish, and a variety of cut bait. One time, I even caught one on a chicken bone. Tonight, it's all about the red snappers here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. Welcome to the Florida Insider Fishing Report, presented by Yamaha. Hello everyone, we're glad to have you back with us on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. June is heating up and Rick, I'm not just talking about the temps, the fishing has been on fire and this week is no different with our theme species in the spotlight, Red, you say it. Snappers. He has to say it. I can't say it like Bring that. Look, I know. Hook me up with the red snapper shirt. See that. And you know what else? What They're going to hook up all our viewers with some really cool sales between now and the 15th of June. But mm -hmm. if they want to learn more about that, they're gonna have to stay tuned into the show. Exactly, exactly. All right, well, in addition to our guests from Eagle Claw, we're talking with later on, we have a lot to learn with Dave Farrell at the CCA Workbench, like how to catch red snappers on some chicken bones. That's correct. That's, I don't know and where you're gonna things. get those for bait. You're gonna have to go to the KFC early in the morning, I reckon, to pick those up. Or, or Rick's Publix, boat actually. after a long they day. They have the really good chicken. <laughs> yes, they do. Too. This shirt is gonna be on sale for $19.99. Whoop, whoop. Nice. Reallegends.com, so. Check that Looks out. Good, it makes me look good, so you know it's going to do wonders for yourself. <laughs> oh, Dave. <laughs> oh, he's so. true. All right, well, let's start out in the Real Legends Southwest region with Captain Ronnie Houston and see what kind of catches are being reeled in this week. Talk to us, Ronnie. Well, like always, it's, it's a pleasure starting this show off tonight, leading out with uh, the uh, Bell's uh, Southwest region. You know, Captain uh, Mike Avenon talking about the snapper. Important to him, you know, they could be caught in a variety of bottoms. Steps. And you want to start, especially further down to the south, at about 120, and you work your way out to 300 feet. Now, he's also telling me there's a couple different ways to look for them. You want to look for the fish up off the bottom, off your bottom machine, and he's telling me these fish can be as much as 50 feet off the bottom. He also tells me another good thing to look for is bait piles that are tight to the bottom. He says if you can find these situations, both are really good indications that they are the snapper are feeding, especially if you got some good current. They can also be caught on a variety of live and dead baits, and they can be caught on the artificials by simply vertical jigging. He strongly suggests that when you're fishing for the red snappers, you want to be using uh, at least 60-pound fluorocarbon just in case you uh, run into some groupers while you're snapper fishing and you don't get cut off. Uh, I got a couple pictures of some fish that are caught in the southwest region while uh, fishing with Captain Mike Avenue. So right now is the time here to be catching these fish, and they're catching fish about this size right now. Wow, those are some... On the first side of the groupers. Go ahead. I'm getting mixed reports both north and south from both Captain Mike Avenon and Captain Corey McGuire. Now, the red grouper is 85 to 105 feet right now from Fort Myers Beach to Stump Pass, according to Corey. And a variety of gathers and scamps south from Marker to Fort Myers Beach from Captain Mike in depths of 150 to 170. Both guys are telling me live baits and cut baits are both working well combined with good current. They're both telling me, you know... The, the quicker that current, the better the bite. You can also target bigger pieces of hard bottom as, as well as smaller pieces. Now, I'm being told most fish right now, the 150 to 170 depths, seem to be a good quality. I got a, a picture here of some nice uh, groupers that have just recently caught while fishing with Captain Mike Avenon. Now, on the inshore side, the snook bite. Snook might remain strong throughout the whole region. Obviously, if the weather is still mo moderate, you can work the outside beaches and passes there's plenty of opportunity all the way from Marco all the way up to Sun Pass. Now, the best beach fish right now might be tough to catch due to the clear water, but the pass fishing has been a little bit better. Now, the 10,000 Islands, Indian Key, back towards Cape Romano on your higher stages, as well as the east side of Charlotte Harbor from Alligator to include Burnt Store all the way to Two Pines. Now, live pilchers and pinfish, as well as top water walk the dog lures like the Hijacker, Berkeley Hijacker, or Jay Walker, early morning and late afternoon before dark or after the late thunderstorms. And then also up in the Charlotte Harbor area, you can find the hair bay close to the mangroves. The snook won't be too far away. And I got a nice picture of a really nice snook caught by uh, Perry Bedell. And he was using large live baits in the clean water, fishing the beaches down south, and that was his reward. Final species is gonna be the tarpon. Captain Danny Lathan still says, tarpon bite is still great as long as we have the good weather. Fort Myers Beach, snaps, beaches and passes all the way up to Stump Pass. 
There are fish up in the harbor and a variety of live baits like crabs, pinfish, herring free-lined or under a cork, a variety of four to six inch swim baits. So if you can't want to get out in the heat, the nighttime bite as well, uh, as well as most bridge spans, as long as there's good moving water. And don't think all the tarpon are up to the north. Still getting great reports anywhere from Caxambas Pass all the way down the beaches, especially some guys that have been snook fishing, walking the beaches early in the morning. They are seeing some positive tarpon still moving to the north. Weather looks good. I've got a nice picture of a recent tarpon relief with Captain Danny Lampton. Weather's looking good for the weekend. Variety of fish to catch. Take the family out. Go catch you some fish. All right, Ronnie, thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Caddy Can Hotspots from the real legend Southwest region. He says, inshore, Redfish, Lossman's River to Profilion Key on the higher stages along the mangroves and Deadwood using live and cut baits on a knocker rig. And then offshore, the King Mackerels, Marco Island to Fort Myers Beach, fishing wrecks in 100 feet of water and beyond using live blue runners, herrings, pilchards, and cigar minos. Minos, I mean no. Well guys and gals, <laughs> it's officially Real Legends Week, which we already mentioned, but now through June 15th, you can get 40% off Real Legends apparel for the entire family at reallegends.com. I know I already did my due diligence. I got Dad some little gifts off reallegends.com. That's it. Just Don't kidding. Hope Dad, it's... you're not watching the show. He watches every show. <laughs> uh, sneak peek. All right, moving into the Startron Central West region, Captain Jeff Page has a lot to say about our American beauty. So, Jeff, why don't we get to the snapper stats? Hey, hey. You know what? I love going to Bells and looking in there at all the different cool clothes they got. It really is a good place. But back to the Startron Central West region, Ronnie hit some good points. 110 feet of water on out. Now there was some fish in closer when the season was closed, but now with this water's up in the 80s, even I saw 90 today up on the shallows. So uh, those fish are out there 110 on out. And Ronnie, another thing he said that was in my notes, look for those stacks of bait tight to the bottom, to your hard bottom areas and that's going to hold snappers. And it can be small areas of hard bottom. It doesn't have to be big, long, wide areas. And you're going to have some good ones. And also pay attention because you're going to catch grouper and mangs while you're there red snapper fishing. Uh, cut sardines, squid, live thread fins, live pilchards, and live pin fish work real well. You can catch them on a standard bottom rig or chicken rig. I've got a couple photos tonight of my good friend, third generation Sarasota policeman, Ryan Howe, and his beautiful, lovely sidekick, Miss Hannah Moden. And they had a great opening day. All right, good pictures there, Paige. What do you got else, else you got for that, us? That grouper, you know, and now they're open as well. And all the guys that are out there uh, red snapper fishing, if they get their limit early enough, they're moving on to the gag. And, uh, you know, they're in, they're in a little closer. They're still in 70 to 90 feet, but they're also, the bigger ones are out there where the red snappers are and at 130. Pay attention to your bottom machine. You really take the time and learn how to use your bottom machine. It's gonna make you a way better fisherman out there offshore. My fin fish seem to get the better gag groupers than the frozen or the smaller baits. And I've got a photo tonight with that real happy man with a pair of gags he got with Captain Tim Doe, Offshore Ventures, out of Marina Jacks. Nice. And then uh, moving inshore, snook fishing every week, Rick. I try and put the snook down, but he keeps coming on strong. And the entire length of my region, you can pretty much catch, catch snook, starting down south at Boca Grand Pass, all the way up to Egmont and Passage Key. There's a lot of fish laying right along the beaches. And you can walk along the beach with a fly rod with a small little white bucktail, or you can cast topwater plugs and fish around oyster bars and mangroves like that chrome 110 20J walker, and also a soft plastic like the uh, Bass Assassin Violet Moon with a quarter ounce uh, silver jig head. That's going to get the job done. And then the guys fishing at night, like Captain Dave Parmalu. Big jumbo shrimp, ladyfish, and mullet around the bridges from Blackburn Point Bridge all the way down to the Circuits Bridge in Venice and also on the Venice Jetty. Right now, there's some really big snook being caught in Captain Bucky and Stone Dennis's big snook tournament. Right now, there's a team leading with four snook 
and they average 40 inches each snook, so they're sitting at 160, Rick. Whoa. And I got a snook photo tonight of a good client of mine, Wayne, and his son, Wayne Jr., with one they got yesterday right out along the beach. Look how silver those fish are. Yeah, they look beautiful. Tell me about the trouts, Paige. Real quick, Central West Region trout fishing, there's some new laws, so I suggest everybody goes to the FWC and looks them up for their region. But the trout are biting really good. Um, they're up in the shallow grass in the morning. Good time to throw the chrome jaywalker. And then after that, they move out in the deeper water. You can throw a soft plastic, sea shad on a chartreuse quarter ounce jig head. And my last photo tonight is of a couple happy anglers with Captain Griffin Deans with a big old gator trout they got on slot machine charters. Nice. I love seeing the kids fishing, Paige, and I love seeing you so energetic. I know it's probably getting <laughs> close to your bedtime, so I appreciate all the extra effort, <laughs> bub. We'll talk to you soon. Uh, it's time to go ahead and take a look at the Daiquiri Deck hotspots from the Startron Central West Region. Inshore, he says the tarpon fish the afternoon out going hilltide with corked crabs and a 5-0 Eagle Claw circle hook in the Boca Pass or Egmont Pass. And then offshore red snappers fish hard bottom areas in 110 feet of water on out. Live pin fish or frozen sardines on a standard bottom rig is gonna get the job done for the snappers. I love when Paige is one of the first captains up. Yeah, man. You Happiest get the, camper ever. He's happy that he's <laughs> going to bed. I know. All right, the Alto <laughs> Equipment Keys Company region is coming up next. But first, let's take a look at the CCA Workbench for Academy Sports and Outdoors Rigs and Techniques to see what Dave has on the lesson plan for us today. Well, we're gonna talk about how to catch red snappers on jigs and then how to catch them on bait. So, I'm trying to cover all the ends like of the it. spectrum. And then a chicken bone. <laughs> <laughs> chicken bone. Chicken bone. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Contender boats, always in the game. Fenwick, Sirius XM Marine. Weather, fishing mapping, entertainment. Penn, let the battle begin. Stiffy. Innovators in shallow water performance. And Daiquiri Deck, Sarasota's favorite place to meet. Reliability. Yamaha is known for it. And it's something boaters value, because these days, few things are built to last. When we find something that is, we hold on to friendships, traditions, outboards. Because every second on the water is sacred. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters choose Yamaha for the long run, for life. Because reliability starts here. What started in the flats and bays has migrated offshore. GPS guided trolling motor technology has moved to boats in the 35 plus foot class and allowed anchoring capabilities on most center consoles in any depth of water. From snook and redfish inshore to grouper and swordfish way out deep. Rodan Marine Systems has a GPS anchor to hold your vessel on location. Set it, forget it, catch more fish. Every year, Noble Air Charter flies over 20,000 outdoorsmen and families just like you, economically, to over 300 Bahamian and Florida destinations. Noble Air Charter makes a substantial investment, improving booking and aircraft route planning to create the most affordable and economical flight possible. And tomorrow, Noble Air's team will rise to the challenge to raise the bar yet again. So we're here at the CCA workbench and it's time yes, sir. for the Academy Sports and Outdoors Rigs and Techniques. Dave, you're gonna teach us how to jig a snapper? Uh, I don't know about that, we'll try. Give it a little try. You know, snapper, they're a, they're a huge fish in our 
uh, state. You know, everybody wants to catch them. Actually, in, in all the Gulf states, and you know, they're a great eating fish. They're powerful. They're fun to catch, and there's usually a lot of them. Um, we had a little problem a little while ago where we took a lot of the big ones and we're leaving a lot of small ones and just kept getting them smaller and smaller. But you know, we've had a lot of really good regulations since then, and and uh, the fish are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And hopefully, we'll go out and try to catch them. My grandfather never kept any red snapper under 20 pounds. I mean, nice. that was, and, and they used to get to 60 pounds. So that's what we're trying to do now. And uh, when you get these short little seasons like we get, three to four day seasons, you wanna go out there and you wanna, you wanna spend your uh, one snapper a day or two snappers a day, whatever the regulations are every year. Changes all the time, so make sure you check. Uh, you wanna make sure that the ones you catch are big ones. So, you know, a good, a good way to do that is to use big baits or either that or try to use a jig when you first get there. And we were talking before the show started, you know, when you come up on a wreck for the first time, it's a good good time to throw the jig because they haven't you haven't been feeding them yet. And you know when you're fishing for snappers and groupers and like like a lot of those other bottom fish on a on a wreck or reef or some sort of structure, you want to anchor up usually and start chumming. And if you chum a whole lot and then throw a jig in, you're not probably not do do as well. I mean you'll catch some, you'll catch of course them a few, you will. but you're not going to catch that great big one, that first guy. That uh, the one that hasn't been spooked off yet. So the other way <clears> to think of it too, Dave, it's a good point, is the more aggressive fish are going to feed, so they'll eat the the artificials first. Right. And so what you're doing is you're catching the more aggressive fish when you pull up there by dropping an artificial over. Right. The bait and all the smell that goes with that. And, and it's a good way to find out if there's fish there in the first place. Exactly. And not only that, you know, you drop down there and hey, okay, we're getting bites, and then the other guy say, okay, we can anchor up or you know, because we got the spot, over. yeah, because we got the spot lock and all that now, yeah. which yeah. really helps, you know. That, I mean, that's a game changer for a million guys because you don't have to be that you know, skilled to have one of those. You can just put it on the spot and, and get on top of them and, and start going. And that's another thing, you know, like they were, some of the captains were saying before, when you start marking those fish, if you're marking a bunch of bait that's really hugging the bottom around your structure or, and, you're, and you're marking fish 50 feet above it or you know, in 200, in 150 feet of water, the fish are suspended halfway in between, a lot of times those are gonna be big red snappers because they'll come up off the bottom. And what you'll do is when you, you wanna try to get right on the top of the wreck, I mean, uh, especially when you first get there, I mean, some people worry about spooking them. But if you're in, if you're, if the water's over 100 feet, you can get right on top of them, and you don't really have to worry about it that much. And you're going to be in the zone because right. if you're, if you're 10 or 15 feet, or even, you know, even less than that, sometimes you're not going to get a bite. Sometimes they won't leave that rock for anything right. until you chum them off there. And so when you want to get right on top of the wreck and you want to do a vertical jig, you know, which means straight up and down, and we want to use a, a good nylon jig. Like, you know, what these flare hawks are, are really good. Um, you these can either, R &R tackle. It's an R&R &R tackle flare hawk. It's got a giant hook in it, you know, which allows you to put a, a good trailer, a piece of butterfly, whatever you've caught off the bottom, uh, a nice big piece of squid on there, or even a pilchard. You can hang a, a, a dead pilchard or a dead sardine on that jig. And you just throw that thing on top of the jig, let it sink all the way to the bottom, and then crank up like two or three turns, and then start sweeping it. And you don't, you don't have to, you know, this isn't speed jigging like for tunas and, and amberjack and whatnot. We're trying to catch a snapper or a grouper, and that's what you want to rig too. You want to make sure that you're, you're rigged for both of those fish. So you're, you're going to be wanting to do slow sweeps about halfway up the water column and then drop it down and then start over again. I'm not sure about this. Are you allowed to put bait on a J hook or does it have to be a circle hook? I think you can only put like a fish bites on this. I'm not sure you can tip an artificial jig with bait. I got gotcha. you. I'm not well, sure, but I think you guys <laughs> need to check that. We're not always right. I don't wanna, well, I don't wanna get a whole bunch case, of either. then you got this right here. You got yeah, nice you piece put the of, fish you, bites. You can put a nice piece of fish on, bites on, the on there. And, right. then it's, and then it's legal. Exactly. I, but I think you have to have a circle hook if you're using bait like you have right there with that eagle claw uh, dropper rick. Right, well. If you're you know, if if you're in deeper water, you want to use a deep, a bigger, heavier jig. Obviously, mm -hmm. if you're in 200 feet of water, you want to go up to you know six, eight ounce jigs. If you're in less than that, you know the three and the four ounce little butterfly jigs will work just as well. And then you know, if you're not getting it, and once you 
catch a few fish on the jigs and they start stop biting the jigs, then you you know put out your chum bags and then you you know get out your dropper jig, your dropper rigs and you know with some good circle hooks on there, nice dropper loop. Try to catch you some fishes. <laughs> I'm sorry I threw you that curveball, but I just had no this vision of all these hey. negative emails coming. Oh, hey, you I'm don't sure. know the rules. Yeah. Well, you guys check the rules, and that way yeah. we're out. You keep us in check. How about that? That's it. <laughs> Always right. go to the website and check the rules. Exactly. The Alto Equipment Company Keys region is now up with your weekend report, brought to you by Captain Randy Tao. So let's listen in and see what we can expect for your weekend in paradise. Hey, good evening, fish fans. You know, here in the Alto Equipment region, we do have red snappers, and they're a little unique in the Keys because we have fishing on both sides. We have the Atlantic and we have the Gulf. And a lot of the red snappers that we catch up in the upper Keys, we're gonna find around the same areas where we would be mutton snapper fishing out of the deep water. And a lot of the red snappers, what's interesting, they're suspended off the bottom. So usually if you find them, your bait's gonna be 20 or 30 feet up off the bottom, unlike mutton snappers and some of the other bottom fish will be right on the bottom. But a live pilcher, a pinfish, or even a ballyhoo will work uh, on genuine red snappers. And the one thing you've got to be careful with is the rules and regulations, because they vary with uh, state waters, federal waters, uh, different, different areas that you're going to fish, whether it's a Gulf or the Atlantic. And you really want to know that you're uh, in season or you can harvest them or you can't because it changes a lot. And and it doesn't last long, a couple of days or a weekend. A lot of these uh, seasons are very short like that. But um, as we get down to Key West, it's a better area that you can target the red snappers. And there's no one better doing it than Captain Chris Trossett with real fly charters out of Key West. He specializes in targeting a lot of different fish and he might run to the Gulf of Mexico or he might run to a place in the Atlantic to catch a genuine red snapper, but nonetheless, they do live down there where you can actually go to areas and target them um, a lot better than in the Upper Keys. And I've got a photo of his angler, Chris, with a big genuine they recently caught. Nice. nice. Look at that beautiful day. That Obviously, I must have been uh, in another country or something. I don't remember it being that slick in my lifetime. All right, what else you got for us offshore, Pop? We're at a dance studio. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the, the sword fishing right now is still very strong. A lot of guys take advantage of it because you're offshore already if you're dolphin fishing. And the way dolphin fishing has been, it's hours of boredom punctuated by moments of sheer terror. So there's plenty of time to do other things. And guys will drop down 1,500 to 1,700. That's a, a very common depth that guys will fish in. And depending on the drift and the current, you might stay in shallower, you might go deeper, but it just depends on the day. A fresh bait like a strip uh, bait out of a bonita or a dolphin belly this time of year, very popular. Squid is always one of my favorite, but they don't hold up very well once you start getting bites. They get tore up. That's where the belly strips come in handy. Uh, Captain Nick Stanzik on the Broad Minded out of Bud Mary's. He is one of the best at catching daytime swordfish, and he recently fished with a, a good friend of mine, Jason Samuels, and his son, Finn. And I've got a photo of Finn's first swordfish he caught with Nick. Oh, nice. Cool. Good job, Nick. Good job, Framer. Finn. All right, let's go inshore, big puppy. So permit fishing, you know, it's it's that time of year. Here we are coming up on some uh, uh, new moon tides and, and uh, the current's moving well. Uh, it's been very windy here, but that's okay for permit. They don't mind the wind a lot of times. You can, you can get the job done uh, in the wind. It's a little more forgiving, especially on the flats and that sort of thing. Maybe the big ones on the uh, wrecks and in the Gulf might be a little... Uh, hard to catch with the wind being choppy, but you know, it, it's one of those things that you certainly look this time of year, a live crab is going to be your best bet, throw in front of these permit, and you're probably going to get a bite out of them. And also the fly rod, plenty of guys like to throw the fly at them as well, especially if they're schooled up and their behavior happens to be good that day and there's no sharks eating them. And I've got a photo of Phil DeFazio from Maine with his first permit he caught on a recent golf trip. Good job, Cap. Tell me about the cobias. You know, the cobia fishing <laughs> is a little interesting this time of year. You can find them on the surface swimming if we have a nice day, which is few and far between. But a lot of times when we're catching a shark, whether it's a bull shark or a sawfish, a lot of times these cobias will be on those sharks. So when you, when you get that shark up to the boat and you'll notice the cobias, you really need to be ready. Have that rod with a pinfish or a white jig 
And uh, it's very common right now, these summer months, for cobias to be on sharks. And, uh, and also, when we do get those flat, calm days, we find them swimming on top of the surface, just randomly out in the bay. And uh, you just want to keep an eye out. And I've got a photo of Ed from Michigan with uh, Jumbo Cobia. We caught doing just that. All right. Thank you so much, Randy. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the Florida Keys region. He says that inshore, you're going to go look at the triple tails. They're going to be laying up on the surface, floating on the incoming tide from Flamingo to the West Coast beaches. And then offshore, swordfish. Fish in 15 to 1700 feet of water. Use fresh strip bait and make sure that you keep an eye on the tip of the rod for that very light tap when he's hitting your bait, Bree. That kid on Nick's boat caught his very first swordfish. That's like a fish of a lifetime. That's and you know amazing. what's cool is you always remember your first. Exactly. You'll remember that And forever. some people haven't caught one in their whole lives. So That's right. Good for you. All right, coinciding with the annual Hemingway Day celebration, it's time to sign up for the Key West Marlin Tournament, July 21st through the 24th in Key West. With $50,000 in guaranteed cash prizes, registration is limited to the first 75 boats, so head on over to keywestmarlin.com to secure your spot. All right, coming up next, we're chatting with our friend from Eagle Claw, and then we're dropping our lines into the Discover Crystal River, Northwest, and Alvey Reels, Northeast region, so stay hooked, and we'll be right back. One of those captains is a model. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Power Pole, Total Boat Control, Berkeley, your fish, our science. Bahio, fresh eyes for a rich life. Blue Water Outriggers, everything for your outdoor adventure. R&R Tackle, from our tackle box to yours. Florida Coast Equipment, Florida's largest Kubota dealer. Visit one of our four locations or online at floridacoasteq.com. And Garmin, plot your paradise. An entirely new species of extreme predator is moving offshore. The Yamaha 5.6 liter V8 XTO offshore outboard. Extreme big block thrust and power in the industry's first direct injection four stroke. Quiet, efficient, powerful, and proven Yamaha reliability. More than an outboard, it's a fully integrated power system. The all new Yamaha V8 XTO offshore. Real Legends Performance Outfitters. All you need to feel comfortable on the water all day. Keeps you cool, dry, and protected from the sun. Real Legends Performance Outfitters. Durable performance technology at an unbeatable value. Shop anytime. Go to reallegends.com to find a store near you. Don't miss Real Legends Week, going on now. The only reel with over 100 years of heritage. Alvi Sidecast Reels allow you to cast over 150 yards with up to 900 yards of capacity. Alvi's state-of-the-art drag and 22-inch retrieve rate per wine is perfect for any surf challenge. Alvi Reels are manufactured to best practice standards and are in fact so robust that the Alvi also comes with a 10-year salt and sand warranty. For more information, go to alviews.com. Well, joining me is Mike from Eagle Claw. You know, Mike, uh, you know, Eagle Claw makes a lot of stuff, and you support everything we do at RM Media, Sportsman's Adventures, the Florida, and the Texas Insider Fisher Report. We appreciate the relationship. Tell us why it's so important. Yeah, I mean, you guys have done a great job supporting our hooks. We're just here to talk some saltwater hooks and say thank you to you guys and say thank you to the viewers for support, supporting all our brands. Well, I appreciate it very much. So. Let's talk a little bit about the different types of um, products that we get. Sure. Uh, in hooks, we get a lot of questions and you go out to the store and you see the, a bunch of different colors. So we got a good example here of our L197. It's in that silver color. If you see something out there that's a circle hook or a saltwater hook that's in that nickel or silver color, that's our Sea Guard finish. It's our highest corrosion resistant uh, hook that we make. You throw it in your tackle box, you come back a couple weeks later, it's not gonna have any rust on it. That's your all around bottom fish, you know, snapper right there on the L197s. All right, and then the next one. That's which... our 2004 EL. Uh, that's your go-to billfish. Your guys in Guatemala use this. We sell them a ton of hooks. Um, that's your awesome trolling 
trolling uh, circle it, hook. It works so well because of how light the wire is. It's just easy penetration. Great penetration, high speed trolling. It's not gonna lose that point. Now, a few years ago, Eagle Claw introduced Trocar. the Trocar. Yeah, that's our, our premium grade, um, highest carbon steel, the three-sided point to it, great penetration, 50% less pressure on any of our other hooks or competitors' hooks out there. And it's got the nice little details. Um, that's our AP circle, all purpose. You use it for anything, trolling, tarpon, welded eyes. So where is Eagle Claw located? Tell people about it. We're that. in Denver, Colorado, which means we're manufactured right here in the United States. Uh, we're proud to uh, employ American manufacturers shipped all over the world. Nice. So we have 8,000 SKUs. So if guys want to know more about our products, the full line, where yeah, do they go? Definitely come us, check us out at eagleclaw.com. Uh, check your local retailers, your big guys, Academy, Bass Pro, Walmart, and then where you sell to all the way down to the mom and pops. Guys, don't forget, they're American made, American shipped, and you're uh, supporting an American company. Thank you so much for what you guys do at Eagle Thank Claw. You, Bree, where are we going next? Well, the Discover Crystal River Northwest region is getting their snapper on, all American style. So let's see what Captain Hagalicious is bringing to the table this week. Hey, Hag. Great hook. We use a lot of the trocar stripe and fishing. Uh, red snapper can be found throughout my entire region. We've got a ton of them. There's no shortages here. Um, like I said, the entire region from anywhere from 70 to 300 feet of water. Any high relief structures such as rock piles, reefs, wrecks, uh, bait stacks. As far as bait goes, pinfish, cut sardines, squid are all great baits. You can either catch or use them on a knocker rig or a stand and bottom rig. Red snapper aren't really picky eaters. They'll be in huge schools usually when you find them, and the bigger fish will be on the top of the school. So once you find your fish, once your bottom machine lights up from dropping that first bait down, that column will get higher and higher in the water column, and your bigger fish will usually be on top of that. So use your bottom machine to adjust your baits accordingly. And remember to keep a vent tool handy for unwanted fish and those smaller fish that you don't want to take home. Be very careful with and keep our fishery as strong as we can. We've got a photo here from Rob Davenport of a nice West Coast red Ooh. snapper. Nice. Pretty. <laughs> All right, what else you got Pretty. for us? <laughs> Staying offshore, Captain Rob Davenport of Big Nasty Charters out of St. Pete reports. The weather's been great, the wind's down. Fish are biting really good. It's been a really great week for gags. Some nice bags of gags have been coming in. The bite's been really good right now in 150 to 180 feet of water. Small ledges, bait stacks, rock piles, heavy gear is a must. 60 to 100 pound main line, 80 to 100 pound fluorocarbon liters, 6 to 10 ounces of lead, depending on the current you've got and how deep you're dropping. Uh, standard bottom rig, um, anywhere from a 7 knot to a 10 knot circle hook. And the bait of choice right now has been hand-sized pinfish or grass grunts or cut sardines. And I've got a great photo from Captain Rob of a beautiful gag. Beautiful. Oh, that's such good eating. All right, to keep going, Bubba. Moving in short, Captain Jimmy Huddleston at CaptainHud.com reports out of Ozona right now. Deeper uh, troughs along the beaches. The snook have been staged up and feeding heavily on the outgoing tides. Free line pinfish and grass grunts with 30 pound fluorocarbon leader. Uh, if the tide's moving a little strong to get the rig down to the bottom, just put a bigger split shot about two feet up from your leader for the offering to present your uh, offering down the water column. And I've got a awesome snook photo from Captain Jimmy. Nice. All right, what else? Captain Gary Bartell of River Adventure Tours out of Ozella Keys Marina in Crystal River says the jack or bell are all over the St. Martin's Reef right now. And also look for big stingrays cruising the flats. They'll be holding jacks too. A free line shrimp with a three out circle hook. And 36 inches of 25 pound test fluorocarbon leader is all you need to get up with a great fight. And I've got for my last photo a special photo. The next generation of Hageman fishermen. Oh. Aww. Tyler Jeffrey with his first fish he caught all by himself. Nice. Right so there. cute. Never too, too late, too young to get him out there. 
All right, man, then you should have showed him how you take that pinfish, put a 10-0 trocar in his back, and feed him to a 150-pound tarpon. You did that, didn't That's you? That's what I did with every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I love you for it. Thank you so much, bub. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Ozella Key Marina Hotspots from the Northwest region. He says, in short, tarpon along the beaches, passes, and grass flats. Pinfish crabs, threadfin herring, free line on an eagle claw under a cork. And then offshore, gag groupers on the rock piles and ledges, 75 to 130 feet of water. Use pinfish, pigfish on bait on a standard bottom rig. I'm gonna have one of those boy you things. Are. Leo, ah, you better get ready because we're gonna teach you about pinfish and some beakies. And some big tarpon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, it's rad snapper galore in the Alvey Reels Northeast region and Captain Tommy Derringer, or should I say cover model Tommy Derringer is here to tell us all the how and where details. Go for it, Tommy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh no. You Tommy. there, Tommy? Oh boy. Oh shit. All right, I'll start his report while we try to get him back on the phone so that he's not too terribly pissed off. He says, Bree, that the red snappers, he has all the red snappers you could want here in the Alvey Sidecast Reels uh, region, Northeast region. With the most recent announcement of opening the Atlantic season, July 9th through the 11th, anglers in his region are pumped up to get out there. There are an absolute ton of red snappers on just about any type of structure in about 65 feet and out. Although a lot of the bigger fish tend to come from a little deeper, the usual frozen baits like sardines, herring, cigar minnows will work well, but if you can, find some live cigar minnows or sardines or even some pinfish, you will probably get a quicker bite. So tell us about Captain Shane Stover and what he says from Inshore Adventures, Tommy. Yeah, you know what? Uh, sorry about that, Rick. You know, there's also a really good mangrove snapper bite happening. A lot of those same areas uh, that you're talking about, you know, and if you're looking to catch a really big red snapper, you're probably going to want to get out a little deeper, um, you know, in that uh, 120 to 140 foot range. Now, uh, there's also, talk about that mangrove snapper bite. Some of those mangroves are going to be spawning on this new moon we're having this week. Chumming is going to be a common practice to get those snappers and the red snappers up to the surface. You know, cut sardines, that's going to be the go-to for chumming. But cut pogies, those also are going to work really well if you can find them. Now, if you're willing to give it a go, the night bite can be really good for both those mangroves and the red snappers. And you know what? You're going to have a hard time at night if you do get out there keeping those really big snappers off the line. And speaking of those big snappers, I've got a picture here. Allison Wren sent me this picture of a couple of really nice red snappers that she caught on her 2500 Pathfinder during last year's open red snapper season. Now, staying offshore, you know, the kingfish bite, it continues this week on the nearshore reefs and wrecks throughout the region. You know, there's still quite a few 8 to 15 pound kingfish on the nearshore stuff, but there's also a few bigger fish showing up offshore. You know, the Meat Mayhem Tournament that was here in St. Augustine last weekend, saw some pretty big fish coming in. Uh, I think it was about a 46-pounder that took the win in that tournament. Now, from what, I'm, from what I'm hearing, most of the bigger fish were caught to the south end of our region, towards Ponce, uh, and they were mostly slow trolling some blue runners. Now, this weekend, we have the old-school kingfish tournament, all kinds of kingfish tournaments going on. So good luck to those guys this weekend. Hopefully, they catch some big fish. Now, moving inshore, you know, we've got a really great tide throughout the region this weekend to get out at first light and find some redfish tailing and backing. Now that low first of incoming water, that has had the redfish fired up first thing. You know, they've been up there super shallow. They're chasing some really tiny little small shrimps and minnows. You know, we've been seeing some really cool eats. Some of those fish have basically been, you know, they're tossing themselves up on the mud to get at those little baits. Now, great places to look for that to be happening would be the very backs of the creeks or right along the ICW on the edges of the flats. Now, once the tide starts to push in a bit, follow that tide into the flats or in the backs of those creeks because that's the same thing the fish are going to be doing. Now, a fly, that can be a great size to present to those shallow fish, but, you know, we've been doing really well using the Saltwater Assassin Elite Shiner Paddle Tail. We like to rig it on a weedless worm hook. You know, that bait, it makes a small splash as it enters the water, so it can be presented gently to those shallow fish. I've talked about that before. That's just a great setup for that. Now, once the tide gets high and hits the grass, 
we've been catching some nice redfish by just dead sticking a live or cut piece of mullet right on the grass edges, especially around any bait schools. Now there's been some really nice sized redfish up there really shallow this week. And speaking of that, I've got a picture of one. This is Barry Browdy with a really cool looking spotty redfish that he caught with me this past week in St. Augustine. Nice. Now, also inshore guys, the tarpon. Man, I'm so excited. The tarpon have finally started to show up in better numbers over this past week. Just like the kingfish showing up with the bait, the tarpon have as well. Now, on some days, the pogies, they've been in the inlets and just inside the inlets there in the ICW, and some days they have been on the beach. Now, if those pogie pods are on the beach, the tarpon are going to be in there feeding early, uh, early in the day, and then again right at dusk, or if we get an afternoon thunderstorm, that fires them up as well. Now, if fishing for those tarpon, you know, I would just net some of those pogies then free line them on a six aught to even a nine aught trocar circle hook, depending on the bait size around those pogey pods. Now the shrimp boats, you know, they've also shown up a little bit and the tarpon, they're already getting behind those shrimp boats eating the bycatch. You know, if you can time it right when they dump that stuff, look for the tarpon to be in there feeding along with, there's a ton of big sharks out there right now. And I've got one last picture here. Captain James Canellos from All Water Expeditions sent me this picture of a big tarpon his client Evan caught along the beach this past week. All right, Woo-hoo. Tommy, don't be too angry that with the call drop got dropped when you're living on the edge of technology. It sometimes happens. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the strike zone hotspots in the northeast region. Tommy says, ensure redfish on the early morning, low tide in every back of the creeks all the way in the back of the creeks from sisters all the way through St. Augustine looking for the fish backing and feeding fish. That's how you're going to find those reds. And then offshore, snake kingfish on the Nine Mile Reef out of St. Augustine. There's some bigger ones off of the reef and some structure out deep. Tommy does not get mad, but what makes him mad is a dropped call. I know. Very mad. <laughs> have to talk him down. Yeah. All right, coming up next, we're headed up to the Garmin Panhandle That'd region. It Trigger. might be as well. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> Headed up to the Garmin Panhandle region, but first let's get a glimpse at what Dave has in the Taco Marine new product spotlight. We got Ooh. stuff. We're making uh, Father's Day a great day. Look at that. Oh, that's good. pretty. Whoa. Looking Those good nice. over there, Dave. That's better than a can of shaving cream, isn't it? <laughs> I'd say so. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Have fun out there. Penn, let the battle begin. Alta Equipment Company, where uptime matters. Ameritrail, load, launch, relax. Rodan, set it, forget it, catch more fish. Discover Crystal River, Florida. Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin. Best lures, period. And Maverick Boat Group, makers of premium boat brands Maverick. Hughes, Pathfinder, and Cobia. Yamaha's reputation for saltwater reliability is driven by the 4.2-liter V6 Offshore's 97% reliability and overall performance. Reimagined with new advantages like built-in digital electric steering for incredible responsiveness and exhaust rerouting for more powerful reverse thrust, the legacy of the reliable Yamaha 4.2-liter V6 continues, now more refined and capable than ever. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Whether you like to ride the wind, find your secret cove, or reel them in. Plot your paradise with GPS Map Series from Garmin. one of the most ancient forms of hide-and-seek known to man. 
And nobody knows how to play the fishing game better than the backcountry guides and offshore captains of the Florida Keys and Key West. Ready or not, here we come. here at the CCA workbench and it's the Taco Marine new products and guess what yes, we're going to be trolling the edge living on the edge so let's just get at it. Well first we're going to start down there with the Starbright oil absorbent sheets and um, you know when, when you're messing with boats you're going to have fuel and oil spills of all kinds and instead of letting all that stuff get in the water we want to make sure we contain it on the boat and that's what these are for. These are it's the most effective way that you can have to clean up oil and fuel because they don't absorb water, they only absorb oil and fuel. They'll hold 15 times their own weight in fuel and oil. And you can put those things around, like when you're fueling up, you can take a pad out and wrap it around your fuel, around the hose, so right. if anything gushes out, it goes right into the sheet. If you have a bunch of oil in your bilge, you can just drop a few of them down there and absorb all that and throw them, you know, dispose of them properly. You know, it's got uh, high quality, long lasting materials. There's five of them in a pack. And, um, you know, it's just a good way to, keep things clean and, and during your repairs. You know, when you do any oil changes or anything, just lay some of those things down and keep things clean. Starbright.com, keeping it clean. Correct. Next, we got the Baha Bahio Nippers. These are the glasses that I picked out for mm -hmm. my own. Yeah, I, I wear these, it's very nice. Uh, mm -hmm. I like the uh, tortoise shell because I am a fall color. Yes. Um, you want to pair <laughs> their casual style, but they got a, a whole lot of technical features in them. They have a wide curved lens you know, which gives you a really good field of view all the way out to the sides. It's got the fresh eyes polarized lens technology, which blocks the blue light and diminishes eye strain. And it's, uh, you know, got the you know, low density, which means really light frames that are bio-based nylon frames that are lighter than the oil-based frames, but they're stronger. They got, you know, really high impact. And uh, with the Lapidus technology, uh, removing that blue light bulb, that's why Lapis there's... Absolutely. Yeah. That's it. That's say a, it's it. A say mineral. it for me. I'm not going to say it again because I'll mess it up. That's all right. But that's why their <laughs> lenses are just so beautifully clear. Yeah, because they get that blue out of there. We're removing more uh, rays from the sun. Next, we got some Eagle Claw light wire wide gap Bahio. circle. Bahio.com, by the way. Sorry, Bahio.com right. to go right there. Bahio sunglasses. Bahio sunglasses, yeah. correct. L200, e 4EL light wire Eagle Glap, Eagle claw wide gap circle C hook. Uh, they come in seven aughts to 10 aughts and in packages of five, 17, 19, and even 50. You know, you can, nice. use, these or you can use these things for just about any anything that you want to use a circle hook for. Correct. Uh, from billfish to bottom fish. And the TK4 there is the non-offset Landsat circle hook. It's, you know, it's their premium hooks there. Uh, triple sided hook point for, you know, the trocar. <laughs> really goes in really good. Black chrome finish, durable, cold forged, high carbon steel, made in the United States. Uh, you can't beat them. Uh, made they in the United come in States by one aught to nine aught and you know, uh, packs of seven all the way up to 50. You can buy right. 50 at a time. So it is Real Legends Week at Bell's. Yes, it is. So let's talk a little bit about these pretty designs. Yeah, that's the short sleeve Realtek man's performance shirt. Uh, it's, the, it's a new lightweight fabric. This new fabric is I love it. Realtek. I mean, you can see how it moves. It's, it's like silk. It's just very, very light and airy. It's you know probably better than silk. Um, it's UPF 40, sun protection, quick dry, moisture wicking, and it's got this really cool art by Lena Siminski, you know, really nice offshore art there. They got a tarpon and all that other stuff. And this is the long sleeve version. Again, Lena's art on there, really nice uh, shark teeth. That's a really cool shirt. Everybody it here is. really likes this shirt. You, you know, know what's so good about this shirt? What's that? It's it my size <laughs> and it's the week after my birthday. It's oh, my well, birthday month. I guess month. that's your birthday shirt. So guess what? Thank you so much, Bells, because Daddy's taking this one home. Right? It's my you size can, too. You can go get one of these Shadesters right now. This Shadester is right now on, on uh, sale for $19.99. All well. right. Reallegends.com. And 40% off of the Ricky Dicky shirt. There you go. All right, man. Good job, Bells. Hey, Bree, we got to yep. go. Yes, we do. All right, Captain Pat Deneen is more than ready to get you on some fish this weekend in the Garmin Panhandle region. So let's see what's on the menu. Go ahead, Pat. Hey, Bree, I tell you what, a lot, and I mean a lot of red snapper are being caught in the Garmin Panhandle region right now. We have uh, deep water relatively close off our coast, an abundance of good bottom habitat, and a healthy fishery. 
that equates to red snapper being an extremely popular fish to target. Additionally, uh, Pensacola Bay, it has the depth and the structure to provide good red snapper fishing. You're going to find them on natural and artificial bottom in 60 plus feet of water. The most common technique involves a conventional tackle, a slip sinker rig with five feet or so of 40 to 60 pound leader, and a circle hook baited with either a live cigar minnow or a herring. But a two hook chicken rig baited with cut squid or minnows will also catch its fair share of red snapper, in addition to some vermilion snappers and triggers. Uh, but another popular technique, especially with lighter tackle guys, and also in shallower water, water less than 100 feet, is chunking. And basically, you cut cigar minnows into three or four pieces, hold up over the structure, and start dropping a couple chunks in the water until they disappear, a couple chunks until they disappear. And the snapper will literally follow that, that trail right to the surface. Um, and then you can just put a hook in one of the chunks and, and let it let it sink naturally and, and, and get, some, get some good snappers on light tackle. In fact, some really big snappers are caught by doing that on some of the, the more pressured spots. And there's a photo that was sent in by Travis Smith, a um, really pretty red snapper caught out of Destin, Florida, aboard the Paradise just this past week or so. Nice. There's some supper right there, Rick. Yes, sir. And, hey, staying offshore, quite a few wahoos are being caught by folks trolling for blue water plastic and also by crews pulling lures to and from and between bottom spots. For higher speed trolling, like traveling between the spots, lures with a jet head or a bullet shaped head rigged on heavy cable and a singular double hook is preferred. In a conventional trolling spread, to hedge your bets with the wahoo, put out a couple baits that are, that are going to be more attractive to them, some some subsurface baits on your flat lines uh, at a trolling lead and 20 or so feet ahead of the trolling, or 20 or so feet behind the trolling lead, put a trembler or an Islander Sea Witch Ballyhoo combination. Popular colors are blue and black, red and black, purple and black. There's a theme there. Uh, the Okaloosa Deepwater Fads, really any floating structure and the south edge, the southwest edge, all good places to find Wahoo right now. Be extremely careful gaffing and bringing them into the boat. They tend to come in face first, and they have a mouthful of dangerous teeth. And there's a photo of a really good Wahoo, a 100-pound, or like 100.2, caught aboard. Hook charters out of Destin this past weekend, and uh, that's a lot of Wahoo. Catch me now. I'm fainting. Dang. You know how much sushi <laughs> that is? Oh, my hey, goodness. Uh, 102. Oh, it hurts. Tell me. Yeah, 100.2 is going. Hey, Jeez. in short, trip tail fish in Apalachicola Bay has been very consistent. You can find them inside the bay in West Pass, Indian Pass, and along the Gulf side waters of St. Vincent Sound. Typically, you're going to be, you're going to find them hanging around some sort of floating structure like crab traps, nav markers, or really just any floating structure like logs or debris. It's also not uncommon to, to find one free floating or swimming along a tide line. Uh, so it's a hunting game, traveling and keeping your eyes open. So a good pair of polarized glasses like those behios that, that uh, Dave just mentioned are, are a must. Rig a medium to heavy spinning outfit with a cork two to three feet below the cork. Put a circle hook, live shrimp, and a, a minnow. Basically, find the fish, cast past them, slowly bring the flow back to the fish. Maybe pop it a couple times to get his attention. The triple tails are commonly eight to ten pounds with some 20 pounders possible. And then finally, inshore or near shore, if you want to bend the rods with some strong fighters, don't overlook the black tips and other coastal sharks right now. They're real numerous along that first sandbar. Um, there's plenty of 20 to 40 pounders. You need to sight cast them uh, to bait to baits from a boat, you know, as you ease along, or you can set fish with a chunk of ladyfish. Uh, additionally, St. Joe Bay between the park and the point, another great place to find black tips, as is the beach between the Indian Pass and the Cape. And from what I understand, the, the black chips are pretty good table fare. Um, I prefer to leave them in the water. All right, thank you so much, Pat. Good report from the Garmin Panhandle region. It's time for the Blue Water Outrigger Hotspots. Pat Tar says, in shore, the rock piles and ledges in Pensacola Bay have been producing limits of red snapper and a few groupers in the bay, Bree. And then offshore, head to the Okaloosa Fads and out to the spur for the tunas, the wahoos, dolphin, and occasionally. Don't say wahoo. Marlene. I'm triggered. Marlene. I'm triggered. I'm still swooning over that wahoo uh, picture. You're not allowed to be a trigger fish. Whew. Okay. Oh, snap. Snapper, that is, of course. <laughs> CCM, yeah, back. I'm back. CCA Florida Star has added snapper as a species in the Youth Scholarship Division presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Catch, photo, release, and win for a share of $100,000 in scholarships. 
and there is still time to get registered, so don't you worry. Go to CCAFLstar.com. And still speaking of CCA, your weekly reminder of this beauty behind us, 1952 Chevy 3100 Hot Rod. All you have to do is purchase tickets at CCAFlorida.org forward slash hot rod. And when you win, send this man a nice little thank you. Yeah, he right? can buy me dinner. We'll go for a ride in my truck. There you go. <laughs> All right, east side, we're looking at you. Coming up next, we're talking with our captains from the Real Legends Central East and r, &R Tackle Southeast regions. And remember to keep up with everything fishing in Florida. Make sure to head on over to our website, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and to see new fishing adventures along with reports, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Captain Rick Murphy. See you soon. Look at that Real Legends buoy. Whoa. Whoa. Pop it. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by StarTron, cures and prevents ethanol fuel problems. Alvy Reels, a better way to fish. Berkeley, your fish, our science. CCA Florida, the voice of recreational anglers for over 35 years. Diamond Fishing Products, our reputation is on the line. Murphy's Law Sport Fishing, book your trip today at murphyslawsportfishing.com and strike zone fishing. Thing that nothing says no to fish bites. We are the Fish Bites Nation, and this is your invitation. So grab some fish bites and get busy casting, because you can't join the nation without doing the catching. Ask for Fish Bites or Fish Bites Fight Club lures, or visit fishbites.com. Come explore untouched Florida, where you'll step into holy sea cow and fish pristine waters where you'll reel in, whoa. Come discover Crystal River with exciting adventures and incredible surprises everywhere. From exhilarating river adventures to scalloping in the Gulf to delicious fish to fork cuisine, this is the place where you can relax into, ah. Just a short drive from Tampa and Orlando is the amazing Discover Crystal River, Florida. Learn more at discovercrystalriverfl.com. Service and reliability makes Alta Equipment the leader for all your construction equipment needs. With seven locations across Florida and preferred brands like Volvo, Toro, Toc, Avant, and Rotec, Alta has the equipment to get the job done. When I need equipment, I trust Alta. From agriculture to landscape to construction, Alta has you covered. For sales, rentals, service, and parts, see your local Alta Equipment dealer today or call them at 844-GO-TO-ALTA. For many boat owners, there comes a time for a big decision. Should you upgrade your boat or upgrade your outboard? Some love the way their boat rides and wouldn't trade their hull for anything, so repowering is a consideration. Some don't have a choice and have to repower their vessel just to stay on the water. The advantages of repowering are many. First and foremost, there is the financial aspect. Not only can you extend the life of your boat, but you can improve the value and spend considerably less money. Also, upgrading to a four-stroke means better fuel economy and a sizable cost savings per hour of operation. Plus, you have peace of mind that your new motor is covered under Yamaha's limited warranty. For this installation, Tommy, a Yamaha certified mechanic, is replacing a 2002 Yamaha 150 horsepower two-stroke with a brand new Yamaha inline 200 horsepower four-stroke. Even though the Yamaha two-stroke is almost two decades old, it still lives up to its reliability and runs like a champ. In fact, it's already sold and ready to start its second life. One of the great things about repowering with the Yamaha outboard is that the transom mounts haven't changed, so no patching fiberglass or drilling new holes. Also, even though there is a 50 horsepower increase, the weight difference is only a few pounds. One of the reasons for this is because some of the components from the two-stroke, like the oil transfer case, are not needed and can be recycled to the new owner. But it's not just the motor that can be upgraded. 
Genuine Yamaha parts like the throttle controls, ignition and cutoff switch, and gauges can be switched out quickly and give your boating experience a whole new feel. This repower took Tommy only about 10 hours, and before you know it, he's got the boat in the water and giving the motor its first crank to start breaking it in. You know, the one thing that's so cool, Bree, when you switch from a two-stroke to a four-stroke, I did the math. I think, yes. if I did my math correctly, you can save up to $25 an hour between the fuel savings and not having to buy two-stroke oil. That's substantial. That's substantial. That is substantial. So we got to keep that in mind. Gotta Whenever have you're thinking about repower. An upgrade. When yeah. that's an upgrade. All right, the Real Legends Central East region is looking pretty exciting for our weekend ahead. So, Captain Ross, tell us what we're catching. Well, you know, red snappers, the theme species, and our Atlantic Federal Water dates have been posted for the red snapper season this year. And anglers are already planning to get out there. They're putting their strategies together for their three allotted fish that they can catch on our three day season. Now snapper are super easy to catch in my region. So you can basically stop on any piece of hard bottom, reef, wreck, and just drop a live pogie or croaker down there. And that pretty much will get it done. Um, red snappers will also chase a variety of artificials. And our average red snapper is running 15 to 20 pounds and a big one will you know, pull the scale down to over 30 in my region. Now I've got a photo here of Mark Gibson. Uh, he caught this one at the nine mile out of Ponce on a fish bite. Fish so nice. like I said, they'll eat just about anything. Now, I've also got another one here that I caught uh, while we were out flounder fishing on a four inch saltwater assassin sea shad, if you can imagine that. Um, so once again, Red snapper are not hard to find in my region. Uh, another species in my region that's not hard to find right now is mangrove snapper. And you don't have to wait for those three days in July to go catch this species in my Real Legends region. Right now, most of the reefs and wrecks in my region have good numbers of mangrove snapper schooling on them. Uh, the best part about this is, is that you can catch them any day of the week. So set up the, on the structure, once you mark the fish and start chumming with small chunks of chum and, and sardines and bait fish, cut up little pieces and put it in your chum slick. And this will get the mangroves to, to not only group up a little better, but rise up in the water column to start eating those little tidbits. Now, once you get them up there away from that structure, slip a small one aught or two aught size hook into a piece of bait and then drift it back in the chum slick and you can uh, get those fish to strike. Now, you can increase your odds of a hookup if you use about eight to 10 feet of 25 to 30 pound test fluorocarbon leader, because these guys are really smart and they've got real good eyesight. And the water's pretty clear right now in, in much of my region. So our average red, our, our average mangrove snapper is running about three to five pounds. We've got some 10 pounders in the region though, uh, especially if you go to some of the more remote uh, wrecks like the Mana Camp or some of those that are way in between uh, places like Port Canaveral and Ponce Inlet. And I've got a picture here of Dave Carruthers uh, out of Ponce Inlet. Uh, he runs strip and lip charters up there with a really nice uh, mangrove snapper that he caught recently outside of Ponce Inlet. Now swinging inshore, our snook bite has been pretty good even though they're out of season and we're getting good reports and, and actually they're showing no signs of slowing down to be honest with you. Uh, they've been good, they're going to continue to be good at all of the inlets and jetties right now. And if you find them around Spoil Islands, uh, you can catch them there as well, especially down around Sebastian and Wabasso and Vero. The smaller fish can be found in the Indian rivers near the mangrove shorelines, uh, finger mullet, croakers, pigfish, mahara are all good natural baits to use. And the saltwater assassin five inch jerk shad in the watermelon slice, silver mullet or alewife colors are excellent lures to throw around those mangroves and docks, especially if you're skipping under the mangroves. Snook will also hit streamer flies, especially at night near, not near the lighted docks around Vero and Sebastian. And most of our fish are ranging from 20 to 40 inches, depending on your location. Like I said, some of those smaller fish around the docks and mangroves, some of those larger fish around the inlets and the spoil islands right now. And uh, last species is speckled trout. And speckled trout, you know, they're undoubtedly our favorite species here in saltwater uh, in Florida. And we've been catching quite a few this week. It's been actually pretty strong. Walk the dog style plugs seem to be working best first thing in the morning. And then we're switching once again to those five inch assassin jerk baits. They seem to be uh, working really well on the trout. It's the, basically the same bait that we're throwing at the snook. Uh, if you wanna cast those things around points that have mullet on them, those are gonna be your key features right now 
anywhere where there's a shoreline and you have a scallop and then a point and then another scallop and then another point, don't really worry about the scallops too much unless you see huge amounts of activity going on in there. Go to those points and go from point to point to point. That's where those bigger ones are gonna be. And I've got a nice picture here of Ashton Casey with uh, his personal best trout that he caught on a nice topwater plug last week with me. And uh, we're getting some pretty good ones up here right now, Rick. Looks nice, like your fishing's Jim. on fire then, Jim. And it's you know, not bad at all. After two weeks, how'd Mary life treat you? I was just gonna ask that. <laughs> I beat you to it. Oh, Cute. I couldn't be happier. You know, uh, Miss Robin and I have been really having a lot of fun together uh, for a long time. And now it just seems like we've blended that much better. And it, it's it's an enjoyable time for me. I'm really appreciating uh, all you guys, what you did for me down at the, in the Keys when we got married. And you know, we're just having fun every day. Let me see the ring. <laughs> Oh, come oh I, got my, I got my cheap one on today. I got my silicone one on today. You have one yeah. on. That's I, what matters. Yeah. Yes, I, I do. Just, I just can't wait for the baby shower. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. You put no. the no. mouth on it. No. All right, man. Tell her I said hello, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Rodan Marine Systems Hotspots. He says, inshore, catch a release snook around the docks from Oak Hill to New Smyrna. Use live jumbo shrimp or croakers for fish up to 15 pounds. And then offshore mangrove snappers on the reefs and wrecks in 90 to 130 feet of water. Chunk and chum for the fish up to 10 pounds. You think you're so funny. Okay, <laughs> now let's check in <laughs> with mad Captain beat Jimbo. You to the punch. Uh, yeah, we're checking in with Captain Jimbo Thomas and seeing what the R&R Tackle Southeast region is blessing us with for the weekend ahead. Tell us what's good, Jimbo. You got it, Bree, and hello, Rick and Dave. You know, we catch quite a few red snappers that are red, but we don't catch too many true red snappers. Now, since it's been illegal to keep any true reds caught in Atlantic federal waters for at least 11 or so years, they have made a great comeback, and we do catch them on a much more regular basis. So if you're catching red snapper from Palm Beach south to Key Biscayne, most likely you're going to be in state waters, and you can keep those fish as long as they meet the 20-inch size limit. But then as you get south to keep us game, chances are that you're going to be in federal waters. Cannot keep them then. Now, I have my best success catching red snappers, and I don't catch a lot of them. But we do, uh, the few we catch, we catch around wrecks in the 250 to 300 uh, foot range. And we do best in the winter months, it seems. And our beta choice is generally a live pin fish, but we've caught them on blue runners, grunts, goggle eyes, herrings. So any other good live bait will work. And they also eat cut bait. But the fish on the live base are generally a lot bigger than those few that we catch on the on the cut bait. And they're usually in the 15 to 20 pound range, so they're pretty nice. And it hurts to have to let one of those things go. Now, the federal snapper mini season is going to be open for three days in July. Dates are July 9, 10, and 11. And the limit will be one red snapper per person per day with no size limit. Now, staying offshore, fish that we can keep. Dolphin fish has been picking up by the day. Now we're catching a few of them along the edge of the Gulf Stream along with sailfish and blackfin tuna on live bait. But a little further offshore, that's where we've been finding the bulk of them, anywhere from 400 to 1,000 foot range. And almost all these dolphin have had birds working over them, both frigates and terns. Now the fish, they've been moving really fast, chasing flying fish. It's been hard to get in front of them a lot of the times. So we've been trolling rig ballyhoo, and then r and r tackle mahi magnus we've been trying to get under those birds and they get a bite or two and then once you do get them on the troll we've been pitching cut baits like valley or bonita chunks or small live baits and then uh been getting them to follow us and we've been picking at them pretty good now most of the fish have been schoolies in the four to eight eight pound range but there have been a few larger fish mixed in i got a photo here and this is the Thomas Flyer Big Fish of the Week, a 22-pounder that we caught off Key Biscayne. He was caught by Mark Chapman from Fort Myers. Now, moving inshore, tarpon action has been good throughout the region. All the inlets and their adjacent beaches, we've been seeing tarpon up to 100 pounds or bigger. And then in the north end of the region, a live mullus preferred bait, south end live crabs, and big live shrimp top the menu. Tide doesn't really matter if you're fishing the inlets, just so long as you got the water moving. Then we got tarpon around all the bridges around the ICW, and they've been feeding on both live crabs and live bait and artificials in the evenings on the outgoing tide. The inlets have been best in the early mornings and the evenings. Now moving really inshore, 
There's still some great largemouth bass fishing to be had in the Everglades <laughs> conservation areas. Water levels are low, which means the fish are concentrated in those canals and the deeper holes. You want to fish late morning and afternoon, and catches of 50 fish a trip are not uncommon. Using live shiners, crankbait, swimming uh, swimming ribbon tail worms. Been a little closer to home in the urban canal system. They've been producing peacock and largemouth bass. Captain A. Re- a. B. Raymond, he says that he's been ch- catching chunky peacock bass, and he's been catching them on chartreuse bucktails with redheads. He's been bouncing them along the banks, and white swimming plugs retrieve fast around the concrete structures. Also in those urban canals, he's been catching snook and tarpon, and he's been catching them on a on slower retrieve, like a slash, uh, using four to five inch jerk baits. Now I got a photo here of a nice peacock bass caught by A.B. Raymond earlier this week. Okay. All right, Jimbo, good job. We appreciate it very much. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the Southeast hotspots from the r r Southeast region. He says, in short, fish tarpon and snook off the beaches with live and artificial baits early in the morning and late in the afternoon, and then offshore. Head out and search for the mahis, eight to 15 miles out under the birds, the floaters, and the weed lines. I think I'm gonna take me a peacock bass fishing on Friday. Oh. I think I'm gonna do that. If I, I was just inspired. I would invite myself, but I actually have a charter, so. Good for you. Yeah. You're only missing a birthday, it's fine. <gasps> oh. I right, know, right it hurts, right? It hurts. Right through the heart. All right, the Fish Bites East region is rolling out its lineup next right here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. You certainly know how to hurt a man, Bree. I do, though. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Fenwick. The Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. The IGFA, fish for the world. Noble Air Charters, raising the bar yet again. Sportsman's Adventures with Captain Rick Murphy, fishing for adventure. Real Legends, everything you need to live life local. And Taco Marine, troll the edge. It's one of the most ancient forms of hide and seek known to man. And nobody knows how to play the fishing game better than the backcountry guides and offshore captains of the Florida Keys and Key West. Ready or not, here we come. At Florida Coast Equipment, we understand you don't work banker's hours, so neither do we. You have a business to run, you have a family to feed, and you need your machine up and running. So our service team and our parts department will be there. If that means we have to stay late, we'll do it. If we have to start early, we'll do it. Because at the end of the day, you want equipment you can depend on and people you can trust, and we have a service team that will be there to service you. Pump up the performance in all of your engines. into gear with StarTron. I'm Captain Rick Murphy and I'm a life member of CCA. Why am I so involved with CCA, you ask? Because I want our fisheries to be in better shape for my kids and their kids. CCA is working to ensure the future of recreational fisheries and the rights of recreational anglers. The future of fishing starts today with you. How do you want to leave things with your kids? If you're like me, you'll want to make the right choice and go to joincacaflorida.com right now. Today's Power Pole Tip is about how I really love how the charge 
really helps me extend my day of fishing. Now let me explain. When we're running up and down the beach chasing schools of tarpon or maybe on a spot lock in a channel situation, we're really using a lot of voltage out of our trolling motors. Now, when I hook a fish and I simply jump down and turn that switch and start the big motor, now I immediately start replenishing my trolling motor battery voltage. That's what the charge does. I also have the ability to monitor exactly what's going on with those batteries. And in Florida, when we have 14 hour days, this could really extend your whole day of fishing. So keep in mind that whenever you're fishing and you need to recharge your trolling motor system, all you have to do is simply turn the key on and now you have the ability to recharge your trolling motor system. If you have any questions, you can go to PowerPole.com and that's today's PowerPole tip. So Bree, in March, Dan Benson from PowerPole came down and we did a two day fishing show, a sportsman's adventure show, yes. but one of the things we were doing was also creating a footage on the charge and how it works throughout mm. the two days. So we constantly were monitoring the, the, uh, the charge in the house battery, the engine battery, and the trolling motor batteries. And then when we run to a new spot, it would show how it had charged them up. And then after we had run trolling motors and chasing fish all around, it would show how it was real windy. It would mm -hmm. show how it decharged and how we could monitor all that. The cool part is we're taking all that video and we're putting it into an eight minute video about the charge for power pole. So you'll be able to catch it on their there YouTube you channel, their site, as well as ours. Smartphone, smart power pole. That's it. Hey, hey. Be the smarter. Fish, <laughs> be smarter. The Fish Bites East region is racking and stacking some dolphin, but you're going to get some Wheaties on the side, right, Mike? That's it, Bree. Since red snapper season in the Atlantic doesn't open until July 10th or 12th, let's talk about dolphin. With all the wind that we've had, that's really ramped up the dolphin bite in my region, although it did bring a lot of weed in. Uh, off Palm Beach, the bite has been in 200 to 500 feet of water, while off Stewart, it's more like, uh, you know, like 150 to 300 feet. In St. Lucie County, they're scoring on the dolphin as shallow as 70 feet of water, but the larger fish are definitely coming out deeper, like 200 feet of water or more. And you control ballyhoo and skirt combination or a strip and skirt, a strip and skirt combination just to cover ground and to keep your baits a little more weedless. But a lot of the anglers right now are just slow trolling or drifting uh, live baits along the edges of the sargasm weed and putting one bait down deep. Most of the dolphin are schoolies, but fish to 28 pounds were caught this week. The nice. other bite, the most consistent bite in my region has been for kingfish. Uh, with school fish, you know, stretched out from Oh, from the sand pile in Stewart all the way south to the reef in 110 feet of water off Lake Worth. A lot of the kings are in that 10, 10 to 20 pound class, but there's some big fish mixed in uh, as well with uh, the Loran Tower Ledge uh, and also the reef off Jupiter holding a lot of those big fish. There's uh, a lot of fish in close to shore as well. So if you can find a, a good bait school like off the Juno Pier or in, over some of the shallower wrecks in 50 to 70 feet of water, you can literally just catch a bait out of that bait school, hook, up, hook it on, throw it right back into the bait school and catch a king. And for baits, Spanish sardines, cigar minnows, pilchards, those are gonna be your top choices. Uh, either slow trolled on a number four wire stinger rig or drifted on a triple hook Palm Beach rig with 40 pound fluorocarbon leader. So the kingfish bite's pretty strong right now. All right, let's go ahead and go inshore, bub. Well, you know, windy, choppy seas have kept the beach anglers from getting to the tarpon that are migrating out of the Keys. But you can still target those fish around the inlets. Um, pretty much all the inlets in the area are holding tarpon right now. The best action has been for anglers drifting a live mullet around the mouth of the inlets on the outgoing tides. There's also been good concentration of tarpon around uh, St. Lucie Locks. Uh, Harbor Branch section of the St. Lucie River and uh, up in the Indian River around, around uh, Big Mud Creek. Beach anglers should get a shot at it this weekend, really starting starting today. We should see it all the way through and even into next week as, as things start to calm down. Out front, you can throw anything from a live crab to a sardine, a thread fin, or a pilcher. Even a live mullet will work. On the inside, you want to slow troll or drift a live mullet in the current or put a dead mullet on the bottom. That's kind of old school style. Uh, if lures are your game, you can look for the rolling fish, and sight cast them with a saltwater assassin, four inch Houdini colored sea shad. And the average tarpon in our region is gonna be 30 to 90 pounds. I got a photo 
that's Captain Chris Britton with a nice tarpon that they caught in the crossroads area that uh, had a steward and that fish ate a live mullet. The other thing we got going, uh, snook season is closed, but the catch and release action remains excellent in the intercoastal waterway north of the Lake Worth Bridge, also along the shorelines and seawalls near Hook Sound. If you like throwing topwater plugs, those seawalls have been excellent early in the morning, um, as has the shorelines in that area. Uh, there's also been a lot of fish around the docks and bridges in the St. Lucie River and up around the North Fork, and that's a topwater plug or, or saltwater assassin die dapper bite. Uh, live mullet will also catch fish in those areas. Around the inlet, we're seeing a lot of sub 10 pound fish along the shorelines, and those fish seem to be sort of either just inside the inlet or within 100 yards of the inlet on the beach just on the outside. The key in that area is to fish parallel to the shoreline, throwing anything that looks like a pilchard. You know, I throw the, the saltwater sass and copper juice, four inch sea shad, that's my favorite lure around the inlet of the beach. The average snook is five to 10 pounds, but fish to 15 pounds or more are starting to show up. Uh, and that'll only get better as the summer goes on. I have a photo that Shelby pounds. She caught that nice snook in Fort Pierce and that fish ate a lot of pilchard. She was fishing with her dad out of Fort Pierce, Captain Brian Towns. All right, let's talk about bass fishing, Bob. Well, you know, the warm and dry conditions have the water level super low in the lakes and canals all around South Florida, from Palm Beach all the way down to Homestead. That's got the peacock bass fired up in South Florida. The southern canals like the C-100, the C-2, and the C-4 are seeing school fish busting along the shoreline and around the bridges and other structure right at first light. And you can throw small topwater plugs or prop baits or, or bass assassin shads in the darker color. And then as the sun gets up, watch for fish cruising the shoreline or pairing up for the spawn. You can sight cast those fish as well. At the same time, the peacock bass bite on the Lake <clears throat> Ida and Lake Osborne chain in Palm Beach County has just been fantastic. A lot of fish are in those residential canals right now and holding on the shade of docks. You can almost you can catch one off almost every dock right now. A live shiner or a small lip plug will work on those fish. And that's like a 30 fish day uh, with, you know, several other exotics thrown in if you fish around the bridges, like a clown night fish uh, or two. And then the average peacock's like two to four pounds. I got a photo, uh, Jonathan Earhart, a steward. He took a trip down to Lake Ida Osborne and uh, caught that peacock on a live shiner. Woo. All right, Mike, thank you so much. Great report. It's time for the TNH Marine Hotspots from the Fish Bites East region. He says, in short, <coughs> bonefish along the shores and the flats of Peanut Island. Live shrimp or fish bite shrimp strips and a jig combination is gonna catch those. And then offshore blackfin tunas, uh, dolphin and occasional wahoo at Push Button Hill off of Stewart Troll Ballyhoo or feathers is gonna work well. What? Come Bone on. Bonefish and Bone peanut? Bonefish and peanut? <laughs> what? That's they don't cool. have I'm going to have to call, maybe get some other verification. That might have been a Budweiser bonefish hotspot. Probably sponsored by Budweiser. <laughs> All right, Floridians, the weekend is now your oyster, so go out there and make us proud and send us those catch photos. But before we send you on your way, stay with us because we're telling you what to look forward to next week right here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. Good job. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories, fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here. We are for those who know. Those who know that opportunity is nothing without preparation. Those who know that the right gear can make or break a day. Born out of a need for reliability. Tested and proven on the Miss Brit Charter fleet. From terminal tackle to all your live boat needs. Whether you're fishing for fun or looking to win a tournament, R&R Tackle has what you need to stay ready.
week, we are talking triple tail, boys. Nice. Woohoo! I like those things. Groceries. They're Groceries, so good. dinner, mm -hmm. floating bags, They're whatever fun. you want to call them. Am I right? I'm going to be <laughs> fishing until next week every day. So if I see a triple tail, maybe I'll take his sides off and bring you and Dave a piece. That, that would be, be nice. great. Thank That'd you. In return, I want the whole get thing, cake. Though. Thanks Last for tuning week. in, guys. We'll see you next week. Go catch some snappers.